Hello guys, welcome back to the channel and to another video where today I'm here at the home of football, Sheffield FC, officially the oldest football club in the world. Been wanting to make this video for a long time and today I finally have the chance. I've been here before once, um, many years ago when I was at university uh, following Lincoln United um, and also I've been around sort of this area uh, relatively recently. If anyone remembers um, last August on my birthday in fact I went to the oldest football ground uh, still in use which is Hallam FC's ground and now I'm here at the oldest football club in the world in Sheffield FC is today they take on Cleethorpes Town in the Northern Premier League so yeah really really excited for this one and let's get inside and hopefully learn a bit more about this extremely historic football club <laughs> Okay, so if you could just introduce yourself and uh, your role here at Sheffield FC. Okay, I'm uh, Andy Dixon. I'm the club historian here at Sheffield FC, um, the oldest club in the world, so plenty of history. Yeah, an extremely historic club, as, as I've found from uh, just walking around here. But um, if you could just give me sort of a bit of a little bit of the history about the club. I know there's a lot of it, but just uh, sort of as best as you can, really. Yeah. Well, well, the key part of the the early days, obviously, you know, first club when it was formed, and for a couple of years, they were just playing games between club members. There was no other club to play against. Hallam FC come along. Um, they form another club as a split between members of Sheffield. And in 1860, we get the first ever club football game between two clubs. By that point, we've got the Sheffield rules um, and being from Sheffield and Steel, it, we'd like to describe it as the crucible of club football. It's where it began. Um, and, you know, once you've got two clubs and then lots more boomed over the following years and a set of rules that you agreed to play by, football existed before then, but they were all different games. So you couldn't play against each other. Now we've got football clubs, agreed rules. That's Sheffield FC's importance and Sheffield football generally as well. Um, it was bigger than London, bigger than when the FA started. You know, Sheffield was the home of club football that boomed and exploded. Um, and basically, for the next 20, 30 years, Sheffield FC remained a leading club in the country. So professionalism comes in, Sheffield opted to remain amateur. So there's a lot of history after that, but it becomes a story of survival for many years. Um, it, it's those sort of first years are the really important parts where we've got England internationals and FA Cup quarterfinals and Sheffield support for the FA Cup, turn it from a, a London competition into a national competition. And so many kind of really key bits that help the game grow to this global madness that we've got today and i've had a bit of a look around in the boardroom at all of the trophies and sort of uh, bits of memorabilia and stuff and even even up here i'll overlay some of the bits on screen but um there's uh inter milan shirt there real madrid shirt or can you explain the sort of links there for people that, that aren't aware with some of these huge global clubs yeah i think uh, and a great relationship with Borussia dortmund in recent years as well 
the, the story of the oldish club and the fact that we're still so small and semi-professional and you see this out today we so people love it the story of the oldish club and and how it came about but the we've got the ajax and inter milan shirts that they played us for our 150th anniversary um so they both played a game at bramall lane inter milan have matarazzi who just won the world cup came and played um a young mario balotelli was in their team that day um Pele came across as a guest of honour for those games. Yeah, Pele famously said, without Sheffield FC, there wouldn't have been a me. The story you know, gets that interest. And then we've got the Real Madrid shirt over there. Um, Real Madrid, there are two clubs in the world who hold a FIFA order of merit. Real Madrid and us as, as the oldest club and, and Madrid as you know, the most successful European club. So to be in the same position as a club of that size is crazy and our chairman says he went across to Madrid to talk about it and they showed him around the Bernabeu and he was in awe and, and so on and so all they wanted to do was talk about Sheffield and the story of the club you know at Madrid so it, it's just a great story I think and, and still a romance story you know to this day so it's absolutely fascinating, but bringing us up to the modern day, um, can you just sort of tell us a bit about, for those who aren't aware, sort of where you are now as a club? And um, I've heard about the potential uh, of moving homes again, um, sort of where you are now and what the plans are really for the, for the future of the club. Yeah, so we're playing at the, it's the eighth level of football, so we would need four promotions to get to the football league. So long way down. Um, as a semi-professional club, you can probably look at a couple of levels up to that. You know, basically everybody's professional now. So we kind of, you know, we want to progress. We'd love to go up a level, possibly two. But it, I think part of the beauty of the club is we, we still play for the love of the game as much as anything. So that's great. Where this stadium here is the first time the club ever owned its own home in its whole history, which... They moved here about 2000 um, until that they'd you know, played in various places, but never owned their own ground. So the move here was big. Technically, we're just outside Sheffield, um, which rankles ever so slightly. We'd like to be back in Sheffield. So the stadium move is going to do that. It's, it's fairly walking distance up the road from where we are now, but um, it's back in Sheffield. So Sheffield Football Club will be home. Um, and the plans for it are, are amazing. You know, it, it's going to be a much bigger ground than they say. A you know, good, I think they're talking four or five thousand capacity stadium, which will be great. We've then got to get the crowds to fill it, obviously, but um, it's got great back in there looking to have sort of football training academy. Um, it's good the ground's got a cricket pitch on it now, so that's going to stay as a cricket academy. and. Um, there's a lot of space in, up there. It, it's a transport kind of union ground. So lots of space. So hopefully that's going to be amazing. Um, and, and keep the, you know, ground wise, it's not like we're tied to it for the roots. It's the club itself that's it's all the history and, and that will stay wherever we play. So to be in a much bigger base will hopefully be the groundwork for us to push on up a couple of levels. But you know, people always say, would you turn professionally? So I don't think, I think that spoils the story, really. But, you know, they, they opted to not turn professional 140 years ago, and I think we should honour that, as, you know, going forward as well. But, um, yeah, it'd be nice to get up to level seven, level six, possibly, so let's see. Boy, boy, boy. Number eight, Alex Black. Number nine, Declan Howe. Number ten, Josh Benny. And number eleven, Curtis Bateson. And some of the three thoughts are number twelve, Dan Gallimore. Number fourteen, Morgan Walpole Craig. Number fifteen. 16, Jack McNamee, number 17, Harvey Thompson, and number 18, Will and Anne. Mm -hmm.
And we're underway here at the home of football. Great game ahead, tennis. <laughs> so about 20 minutes or so gone in this one so far in the first half. Been really, really scrappy in a low quality game so far. The pitch is extremely bobbly, which probably isn't helping, but a lot of, um, a lot of long balls, hoofs, forward headed clearances scrappy clearances but yeah really low quality game so far i think sheffield fc probably just on top but yeah hopefully the quality improves Ooh. really good chance out for sheffield fc to uh, to take the lead there uh, shot from just outside the area just wide of uh, of the post Ooh. Another decent effort from outside the box this time from Cleethorpe. So number 11 taking a shot goes uh, just over the bar. Chances are becoming a bit more frequent here as we get towards the end of the half. Hopefully someone can break the deadlock. <laughs> so there it is, half time here at the home of football. Currently Sheffield FC nil please thought down nil okay so half time here at the home of football and it's currently sheffield fc nil cleethorpe's town nil and uh, gotta be honest with you guys it's not been a great first half that really low on quality as i'll have said um the pitch hasn't helped it's really really bobbly um and it's just not been conducive to to good football you know neither the teams are able to sort of play the ball on on the floor it's a lot of um sort of long balls forward and headed clearances as I'll have said so yeah it's been really poor in terms of quality in that first half um, both teams have sort of had a couple of chances but nothing really of no um, half chances really of anything but yeah I'm just hoping uh, it can it can improve in the second half we can get some goals and um, hoping for a lot more action uh, and a lot more goals in the second half than we've had because it's been really been really low on, on both of those fronts. But yeah, like I said, hopefully things improve and we'll see you on the other side at full time. Oh, what an effort that was for, I think it was the uh, the Sheffield FC centre half, hit it really clean, looked like it was going to dip in, but uh, just, uh, just over the bar. of the half that so far for Cleethorpe. So originally a corner then um, sort of played back back in after it was cleared um, and then headed just wide but yeah Cleethorpe's sort of in the ascendancy here but still relatively even game just hopefully we can get a goal. And it's one oh and it's given offside. Sheffield actually had the ball in the back of the net uh, but uh, as I said linesman flagged it offside. Uh, into the last 10 minutes or so here. Really low quality game as it was in the first half. And I think it just it's going to be 1-0 either way this, or most likely 0-0, but hey, somebody can score a goal here in these last 10 minutes. There it is. Full time, it's finished. Sheffield FC, nil. Three Thorpe's down, nil. Chat in a second.
So guys, there you have it. It's finished here at the home of football, Sheffield FC, nil Cleethorpe Town, nil. And got to be honest with you, that was a really, really poor game of football from start to finish. Um, as I'll have said at half time, um, the pitch wasn't great, really bobbly, and that didn't help either team play football um, properly on the deck. Uh, it was a lot of long balls forward. Um, and just really, really scrappy game, to be honest with you. Neither team had many clear-cut chances. Um, Sheffield FC did have the ball in the back of the net, but it was ruled out for offside. And then there was a few sort of half chances here and there. I think one hit the post, um, a few just wide or over the bar. But yeah, it just seemed like neither team were going to score. But, you know, that that's football at this level sometimes. What can you expect from a, from a, a game in the eighth tier? Um, of English football that is just non-league football sometimes you get games like that but you know what it wasn't really about the um, about the result or the game itself for me today it was about coming here to uh, Sheffield FC the world's first football club and finding out about their long and um, illustrious history I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, that part of the video anyway and uh, sort of um, all the interesting things we learned today about Sheffield FC a very historic club um, but yeah guys if you did enjoy the video please do not forget to leave a like and also subscribe to the channel with notifications turned on so you never miss an upload thank you so much once again for watching and I will see you in the next one